Hello, everybody. I'm Roy Firestone. This was an obituary, a kind of tribute that I knew was coming, but I hoped would never really come. You know, it's hard to talk about Vin Scully and his influence without getting verbose or long-winded. Those were two things that Vin was not. He was the poet laureate of baseball, but you no doubt have heard that before. But he was more. He was the single greatest broadcasting figure in or out of sports in my lifetime. Better as a broadcaster than Edward R. Murrow, better than Cronkite, or whomever you'd want to name. Now, maybe their broadcasting for some had more importance, but none of them could carry the longevity, the consistency, and the broadcast elan quite like Vince Scully. Eloquence and elegance at the same time, night after night, day after day. He was a great broadcast reporter, a fact that is sometimes overlooked, an incomparable storyteller. He had a magnificent ability to use words as the stroke of a paintbrush when it was on television, but even better when it was on radio. He broadcast into the microphone longer than Cronkite had been alive when he left the anchor job at CBS, nearly 70 years at the mic most often perched high above Dodger Stadium in the press box that would later be named for him, and often open every broadcast with these words, pull up a chair, it's time for Dodger baseball. When I was a kid, I lived in Miami and almost never got to listen to Vince Scully on radio or TV. But once I got into broadcasting, I started listening closely to the master. I made it my business to shut up and listen. It was easy to hear why he was the best and no one else came close. He was something close to Caruso at the microphone. He had a command and a sharp eye and a thoughtful heart. But there was something that truly defined Scully and his work, grace. That's the word, grace. There was a grace to his broadcasts, particularly in baseball. But Vin had grace in his eight years of broadcasting the Masters Golf, too. And his call of Joe Montana to Dwight Clark, the catch. Montana looking, looking, throwing in the end zone. Never over the top, but thrilling and simple. He could be regal, but never pompous, reverent, sometimes playful within the same broadcast. Vince Scully's voice was not traditional, but he never forced a sound or an image. He told Red Barber when he was hired to be a broadcaster for the Dodgers 72 years ago, when he was just 22 years old, that he would never root for the Dodgers on a broadcast, and he never did. His calls could be electrifying, like his call of Kirk Gibson's home run to end game one of the 1988 World Series. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. Perfect. He could move you to tears with the simple elegance and deftness describing Roy Campanella's return to the Dodgers at the Coliseum after Roy suffered permanent paralysis in an automobile accident the year before. Let there be a prayer for every life. And wherever you are, maybe you, in silent tribute to Campanella, can also say a prayer for his well-being. The simplicity and brevity, while combined with poignance and respect for the words, was something I never heard from an announcer in any realm. He saw just about everything in the game, personally calling three perfect games. Got it! Twenty-one no-hitters, twenty-five World Series, and twelve All-Star games. He called Sandy Koufax four no-hitters and the perfect game with a perfect description. It is 9:46 p.m. Two and two to Harvey Keen. One strike away. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung out and missed the perfect game. He could fill you with awe and wonder with his words, and how he used those words. He was sometimes criticized as pedantic, but he never was. He was the voice when the eyes couldn't see with radio. Bob Costas relates a story of how Ray Charles told him mostly all his life 
He just wanted to meet Finn Scully. Bob picks it up here. He said, I asked why Ray wanted to meet Vin Scully. And Ray Charles said, well, because I love baseball. But you have to understand, to me, the picture means nothing. It's all the sound. And Vin Scully's broadcasts are almost musical. So I enjoy baseball so much more listening to him. How many nights, how many days I listened to that man with that voice and listened and sometimes watched in wonderment at how he always seemed to know when to say things and when not to say things. He famously stepped out of the booth for more than two minutes to let the cheers wash over the call of Hank Aaron's record 715 home run in Atlanta. Fastball is a high drive into deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence. It is gone. For baseball, what a marvelous moment for Atlanta and the state of Georgia. What a marvelous moment for the country and the world. A black man is getting a standing ovation in the Deep South for breaking a record of an all-time baseball idol. And it is a great moment for all of us, and particularly for Henry Aaron, who was met at home plate not only by every member of the Braves, but by his father and mother. He threw his arms around his father, and as he left the home plate area, his mother came running across the grass, threw her arms around his neck, kissed him for all she was worth. It was descriptive, it was powerful, simple, almost literary, I think. You know, I had a chance to interview Vin Scully numerous times. He was affable and candid, but always respectful and protective of himself and his privacy. He was wary of sharing his personal life. He suffered in his life greatly. He lost his first wife, Joan, when she was in her 30s. He lost his son in a helicopter accident following an earthquake. And just a year ago, he lost his second wife, Sandy, to ALS. But Skelly never questioned God, never questioned his faith. He said, for all the hard times, and you can say, why me? I have to remember the great moments in my life, too, and say, why me? He was humble as he was gifted. He carried himself with so much dignity, so much grace, and gave every broadcast a special, almost royal soundtrack to the games, even the dull games. You know, I covered his Hall of Fame induction about 40 years ago. While he was still a relatively young broadcaster for the Dodgers, he was still in his 50s, I think. And he said this. For 33 years, the good Lord has allowed me to do what I've always wanted to do, broadcast my favorite game. He has allowed me to climb my mountain. And today, thanks to the Ford C. Frick Award, I thank you for sharing this moment with me. Because believe me, today, I saw the sea. Thank you. Vin Scully still had 34 more years of broadcasting Dodger baseball after those words at the Hall of Fame were spoken. He was the greatest broadcaster of them all. And he'd never say it, but I will. He was better than the games themselves. When they ask you for the epitaph, when you want to put it down on the, on the tombstone, Vin, oh, wow. what is it that you want people to say? I, I haven't really given it much thought, but I guess basically um, the best would be he was a good man and a good husband and a good father. That's really all that counts. The in the, rest or, of it in is, the order of things, announcer is way down the oh, list. Oh, yeah, announcer doesn't count. Mm. No.